What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown, and this is Heresy Financial. Despite what you've been told about investing, timing the market is actually very simple. But don't take my word for it. Just look at the portfolios of people like Paul Pelosi or Federal Reserve insiders like Powell or Kaplan, who, upon being found out that he had been trading millions of dollars worth of individual stocks throughout the year of 2020, when the Federal Reserve was engaging in more market intervention than they ever have in the past, decided that in the beginning of September, just two weeks ago, right here at the top, that's when he decided, well, I'm going to sell all my individual stocks just to avoid any appearance of a conflict of interest. And after the public outcry from this, Powell ordered an ethics review of the portfolios of Federal Reserve officials, and lo and behold, found out that there were a couple people that had positions that looked like it might present a conflict of interest. Well, I'm here to tell you that all the focus, all the attention that this has gotten has been completely misplaced, and I'll tell you why. Ready? Let's dive in. Okay, so after it was found out that Kaplan traded millions of dollars worth of individual stocks during 2020 when the Federal Reserve was intervening in markets, driving up asset prices, you could consider that at least an appearance of conflict of interest, right? And so what uh, he made the argument that uh, that he didn't actually violate the rules of the Federal Reserve, there was no conflict of interest. And many people are saying, well, if you didn't actually violate the rules, then the rules would probably uh, should probably be changed. But they won't be changed, and even if they do, it won't be material materially changed just look at uh, congress right now congress people in congress they're allowed to trade on inside information the people who make the laws about where the money goes and which companies get government contracts and how much money goes to specific areas and advanced knowledge about which technologies or you know things like in the fda would be approved they're allowed to trade individual stocks just absolutely mind-boggling if anybody in the world should be not allowed to trade on inside information. It should be Congress and everybody else should be allowed to. It definitely shouldn't be the other way around. And they were it was actually made illegal about 10 years ago and they slowly and quietly overturned that. And so anything that happens at the Federal Reserve as a result of this, like after the, the news came out that Kaplan had been doing this, the uh, Powell, he ordered a review, an ethics review of the portfolios of everybody at the Federal Reserve. And it turned out that uh, different uh, members, different officials' portfolios showed some level of conflict of interest because of what the Federal Reserve had been buying. Even Powell himself owns a couple million dollars worth of muni bonds that the Federal Reserve had been buying. But this is completely missing the forest for the trees. That doesn't matter at all. First of all, Powell's assets, he doesn't choose which bonds that he owns in his portfolio. It's kind of, it's not a blind trust, but he doesn't have any control over those investments. And he also didn't have any control over the composition of what the Federal Reserve purchased. And by composition, I mean the individual choices. So it wasn't like he was going out there buying some bonds in his individual portfolio and then going into the Federal Reserve's account and then buying those same bonds. It wasn't like he was front running the Fed or anything like that. But the point here is that that's missing the forest for the trees. The point is that every single thing the Federal Reserve does is by definition a conflict of interest. Their entire goal of providing stability to financial markets is driving asset prices up. They are the ivory tower elites. They are the rich. They are the people who make the decisions about asset prices going up or letting them fall down as would happen in a free market. And so by their very existence, the fact that they own assets and the fact that their existence is to drive up those prices of all of those assets. It does not matter if they bought the individual bonds, if they bought the individual stocks. It has nothing to do with it. The point is that the people who make the decisions about who gains and who loses from inflation or deflation, the fact that the money printer exists, the fact that they have the ability to push asset prices up, and they are the ones who own a lot of assets. That is welfare for the, the elites. That is the bailouts of the rich. So it does not change things one bit whether they move all of their assets into completely blind trusts that are just diversified through index funds, bonds, and stocks. Makes no difference because they're very 
existence is there in order to drive up the prices of all assets. And in doing so, it also drives up the prices of goods and services, which is a tax. It's taxation without legislation, as Milton Freeman liked to say. And that tax is on the people who have no assets and just experience the negative effects of having their cost of living increased, aka the poor. So if you really wanted to end the conflict of interest, you'd have to say, well, number one, you could end the Fed, but if you're not going to go that far, you could at least say something like, hey, you have to what, forfeit voluntarily all 100% of your assets and you're only allowed to live off of, let's say, minimum wage the rest of your life. Because if that were true, then their interests would be aligned with the majority of the people that they're claiming to serve. Because the majority of people in America have no assets and are going to live on minimum wage for the rest of their life. And I have to wonder how long an inflation producing monetary policy would last in a world like that. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.